gentlemen. I'm Donna Bush with your CIG TV News Brief on this Thursday. We begin with a story from the Department of Environment, where we hear about sustainable fishing in the Cayman Islands from Chief Conservation Officer Mark Orr. Since 1986, the Cayman Islands has had marine parks in place to ensure the supply of marine life would be sustainable for generations to come. As Chief Conservation Officer Mark Orr explains, for fish populations to grow in local waters, it's important to protect breeding stock of each fish species. It doesn't make sense to take a large amount for a short period of time and then have none in the future. So in that respect, the DOE has had to uh, put in various laws recently with uh, regarding both the grouper spawning, for example, as well as new marine park reserves, um, which have new areas for and fishing rules for fishing and take of various species of, of fish. Um, with the groupers, for example, we've had to make a closed season during the potential spawning time. So from the 1st of December to the 30th of April each year, um, there's, you're not allowed to take any Nassau grouper at all in Cayman waters. And this is, includes buying, taking, per, um, having in your possession, receiving the whole nine yards. Um, you just cannot uh, take Nassau grouper during that time. During the open season from the 1st of May through to the end of November, uh, you're allowed to take five Nassau grouper per person or per boat. Um, and those fish have to be between 16 inches minimum and 24 inches. So there's a slot limit you can take them. You cannot take any Nassau grouper larger than 24 or smaller than 16 inches. And what that allows is the larger fish are our prime breeding um, stock. So those fish are going to lay more eggs, stronger genetic lines, and keep, this, keep Nassau grouper around. Mr. Orr tells us more about the overall goal of having marine parks in place and what happens as a result of having them. The new reserves, for example, with, which is no take, um, those areas are going to protect the species and allow species to breed and to, to populate. And then they're going to move into the open areas which are nearby. And those areas are going to keep those areas stopped, hopefully indefinitely, so that we can continue to catch fish. So the goal is not to stop people fishing. The goal is to maintain stocks of fish that people can fish and can continue to fish for the rest of their lives, teach their kids, teach their grandkids, and that's the important part of our work. Over the past 30 plus years, various changes have been made to the marine parks laws, enhancing protection of local marine life. Mr. Orr explains what fishermen on boats and shore are allowed to take and not take. With the um, revamping of our marine parks, we now have uh, what's called a marine reserve, which is a no-take area. In those areas, which on our maps are usually shaded in green, um, you cannot take any marine life alive or dead, except we do allow catch and release fishing for bonefish, tarpon, and permit. And you can take a half bucket of fry or sprat from shore, which includes docks, um, per person per day. Um, and that's all. So, and then that, actually, the sprat is one of the exceptions for most of the zones. Um, there are line fishing zones from shore, line fishing only zones. We do have new line fishing zones, which are usually yellow on the map, and they allow persons to line fish from a boat or from shore, as well as in some of the reserves, there are a few shore fishing only zones shown by a red line, which allow persons um, in traditional areas to fish from shore. So they can only use line and, and hook, and they can only take fish, no lobster or conch or any other marine life, but it does allow them to continue to fish from shore. I believe this is my wahoo. Oh, look, oh, look at that thing right now. Join us on News Brief Friday when we hear more on the importance of marine parks and enforcement of the laws. Making other headlines, the Judicial and Legal Services Commission undertook a formal recruitment exercise for the permanent post of Director of Public Prosecutions recently. Further to the recruitment, His Excellency the Governor, Mr. Martin Roper, has appointed Mr. Simon Davis as the Director of Public Prosecutions. Now, Mr. Davis comes with a significant prosecutorial leadership and management experience, which will be an asset to the ODPP. I'm delighted to appoint Mr. Davis to this role and look forward to welcoming him to our islands. I would like to thank Mrs. James Malcolm for her excellent stewardship during the transition, His Excellency said. Led by Mr. Davis and supported by Mrs. James Malcolm, the senior leadership team and all the staff in the ODPP, I'm confident that the ODPP will be strengthened. Mr. Davis, of course, takes up his post on March the 1st.
The National Trust for the Cayman Islands has launched the Historic Preservation Fund. The trust, a non-governmental organization whose mandate under the National Trust Law 2010 revision includes the preservation of the historic, natural, and maritime heritage of the Cayman Islands for present and future generations through the preservation of areas, sites, buildings, structures, and objects of historic or cultural significance. Now, the Historic Preservation Fund will provide an alternative for persons or organizations a more, for a more convenient method by which to financially contribute and directly support the preservation, protection, and promotion of built heritage throughout the Cayman Islands. There are 12 historic sites across the three islands that make up the National Trust's inventory, which require continuous maintenance, advocacy, oversight, research, and data collection, as well as fundraising. We're encouraged to contact the National Trust for details and ways in way, for ways and rather in which you can assist them. Well, turning to tonight's weather forecast, we can expect fair to partly cloudy skies with a 20% chance of showers uh, late, later tonight. Temperatures will fall to the low 70s. Winds will be north to northeasterly at 5 to 10 knots with higher gusts, while seas will be slight with wave heights of 1 to 3 feet. Tomorrow, we can expect partly cloudy to cloudy skies with a 30% chance of morning showers. Temperatures will rise to the upper 70s. Winds will be northerly at 10 to 15 knots, while seas will be slight with wave heights up 1 to 3 feet. The outlook is for developing a developing low-pressure system northeast of the Bahamas to support a weak cold front that's moving through the Cayman Islands area on Friday morning with moderate northerly winds and seas on Friday becoming northeasterly by Friday night. Now, the synopsis calls for light northwest winds and slight seas, which are expected again across our area for the next 24 hours in response to the developing low pressure system over the central Bahamas. Satellite images show a few patches of low level clouds in and around our area, which are moving towards the southeast. Now, remember, you can find the latest unexpected local weather conditions online at weather.gov.ky. And this brings us to the end of today's news brief here on CIG television. I'm Donna Bush, as always, thanking you for joining us, wishing you a safe and wonderful night and inviting you right back here again tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye for now.